anytime you do what God does, you will get what God also got. The day you surprise God, that is the day that an end will be seen happening to your history to give you a future that is greater than your history. I pray that your anointing will break through the panels of the screen and touch the people in their different homes, in their different institutions where they are watching us live. We give you all the glory, ancient of days. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness and for your goodness that endureth forever. Lord, we come by the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ, whom is exalted, seated at the right hand side of the Father, in power and glory, we humble ourselves before the throne of eternity, wherein Jesus is seated as Lord, and we thank you. Lord, we want to also appreciate you for choosing us, for counting us worthy to be used by your kingdom. Father, for this, we appreciate you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. My Lord, by the power of your spirit, may you go ahead of us and let yokes be broken. Let burdens be lifted. Let God be glorified. Thank you because you are God and not a man. We cover all our listeners with the blood of Jesus and we pray to as many that desire a divine encounter. Tonight, Lord, we pray that you will cause them to meet with your spirit in such an intimate manner to the glory of your name. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name for what you have started doing already. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Child of God, I want to sincerely thank you for joining us in this live broadcast. We have entered by the grace of God during the period where we call the Ember Months. And this month that comprises of the Ember Month, the remaining months of the Ember Month, we take time based on precedence and experience of negative occurrences to prepare ourselves so as to end well. Unbelievable. We are already in the month of September. Well, I want to give God the glory he has led us thus far. And wherever you are listening to me, it is the will of God that you and I, the body of Christ, the church, the council of bishops, Apostles, chaplain network, and prophet, it is the will of God that every one of us we end this year well. Most importantly, the critical part of this year, the last quarter of this year, it is my prayer under the tutelage and under the auspices of the Holy Spirit that in the name of Jesus, may the last quarter of this year give to you what the first three quarters could not give to you put together in the name of Jesus. But as we prepare ourselves for the last quarter of this year that we noticed an increase, a hyper increase in the work and in the activities of the powers of darkness, it is important that we remind ourselves as believers because unconsciously to every one of us plus including me there is this propensity for us to think 
that because we are working with God, we are getting closer to God, we are becoming more righteous, we are becoming more sanctified, transformed, there is a normal propensity for you and I to think that because of that, all is well. Why we have that at the focus of our view, we don't need to take things for granted. And that is why today, as we dedicate this presentation to one of our fallen heroes um, among the network, we are going to be reminding every one of us that as we have committed ourselves in purification, in sanctification, in making ourselves more righteous because of the act of being closer to the tenets, to the principles and the, and the doctrines of holiness, righteousness, and sanctity, it is important that we don't leave something that is important. Very important you don't leave this important issue. I saw this issue, the Lord brought it to my attention in the book of Psalm chapter 11. Child of God, child of God, you can't believe this. You know, it is natural for you to think that because you put your trust in the Lord, every day you pray that the blood of Jesus should cleanse you and you believe in your soul that you are getting closer to God. But I stumbled on something here that brought my attention to be more careful. He said, in the Lord put I my trust. So, somebody who put his trust in the Lord should not be thinking about anything evil. But in the second phase of that chapter, uh, chapter 11 verse 1, he said, now, how say ye to my soul, fly as a bed to your mountain. Now, he's not talking about a bird flying to his mountain. No, he's talking about your soul. That even though you trust God, even though you love God, your trust is in the faith, the capacity, the sagacity, the righteous and the holiness tendency of God. He said, your soul also should not forget to fly as a bird to the mountain of prayer. Why? Are you seeing what is going on here? That as we trust God for increase, as we trust God for promotion, as we trust God for prosperity, the Bible is saying, let your soul not forget to be on the mountain of prayer. Why? Because as we put our trust in those in those areas that God can do the impossible, there is a capacity for you to be for you to forget that there is a principle that the devil uses. The more right and righteous thing you do before God, there is an implication. Righteousness comes with two implications: before God and before the devil. So don't always take righteousness. Only from the from one implication. The more righteous you are unto God, the more blessed God blesses you. But do you know that the more righteous you are to God, the less useful you become to the devil, and the more you become an instrument of attack to be brought down. So that is why you still need the mentality of being careful with the activities of the powers of hell. So that, don't think that because you are righteous, you cannot be brought down. Look at what the Bible is saying. So as your trust is in the Lord, your soul should be on the mountain of warfare. Look at verse 2. He said, for lo, the wicked bend their... I love this scripture. When any man that will bend their bow against your existence in the name of Jesus I, I get a revelation from this scripture God will bury them low hmm. their business will go low 
You, you don't understand. The Bible says, for no, anyone that we imagine a wicked thing against you with the foundation to fire the wicked bow. Ay, 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 ay. I prophesy over your family, over your business, over your destiny, any wicked man, any wicked woman, any wicked structure, any wicked institution that is ready to bend their ball to bring you down. May God make them go low to hell. Let the Ayaba Shakata hand. Look at that scripture. For law, the apostle will be law. The Ayaba Shah, their result will be law. Their destiny will be law. Their capacity will be law. Why? Let's see what the Bible is saying. I love this. I love this. I pray. I pray. And program your destiny and my destiny. That from henceforth, any uncle, any auntie, any unfriendly friend, household wickedness, that will look at you and say you will not end this year. In the name of Jesus, may God bring them down. That is why the Bible says, for low. They will go low be, below six feet. You will not go. They will go. For he that diggeth a pit is he that will fall in that pit. But that is why God is saying that you should not be careless. God is talking to me and talking to you that don't be careless. That you are taking communion. Don't be careless. That you are living a life of sanctity. Don't be careless. That you are clapping your hands, singing, worshiping God. Don't be careless. Why? Because the more you do those things to make God happy, the, the more you do those things to make God very excited, the devil is angry. The more you serve God, the more your service to God makes the devil angry. And the more angry the devil is, the more the devil is ready to use everything in his armory to bring you down. But I prophesy to you, that will not be your portion. You will not die before your time. And that is why today's topic, I am bringing this topic that is very important. You must learn how to stop the hours of untimely death. It is not the will of God for you and I to die before our time. You already know that. We studied that and you know the will of God concerning us. That we are supposed to live long to declare the faithfulness of God in the land of the living. So, but look at this. In the book of Psalm 11, the Bible now said, the wicked. There are people that have, no matter what you do for them, no matter, listen to me, child of God, when we say people are wicked, there are some people that are more wicked than the devil himself. You will be wondering, if you are wicked, devil will be asking them, hey, hey, come Mr. Man, why are you wicked more than me? I thought I'm the devil. Why do you want to overthrow me? There are some people that are wicked. How can somebody be wicked to the extent that you see a man serving God? You see a man praising God. You see a man being faithful to God. And yet, you make ready an arrow upon the string. I prophesy to you hear me. All our pastors, all our evangelists, all our bishops, all our apostles, I, I prophesy to you, all our chaplain, all our members, in all the network of our churches, and you that is watching me now, I prophesy to you from now to the end of this year, any wicked man or woman that will bend their bow, and make them ready upon the string to shoot you down to die before your time in the name of Jesus I declare and decree let their arrow go back to their hair let their arrow go back to their hair their intention their purpose their, their right of service of that arrow will not succeed over your life child of God this is a very serious case. 
I was thinking that the more righteous you are, the more that people should leave you alone. But hear what the Bible says. Not only that this man is righteous, the Bible says a wicked man is that man that bend their arrow. They bend their bow upon their arrow that they may secretly shoot at the upright in heart. Child of God, that is what I mean. That you are upright. That you pay your tithe. That you give your offering. That you sing in the choir. That you pray. That you worship God. It's not enough for you to live carelessly. The more you do those things, the more precious you are to God. The more careful you need to become. The more careful you need to become. Because the devil is a wicked devil. Number three. The Bible now said. After they bend their bow. After they bend their bow. By putting the arrow on the string of the bow. And they hide in the secret. In their secret place. Now, in this case, this is what we call oppression. You know, there are many ways a man can be attacked. You can be possessed. You can be oppressed. You can be manipulated. You can be distrusted. But in this case, the Bible says, because they are afraid of you. Why are they doing this secretly? Because they know. Now, child of God, have you thought about it? Why are they hiding to do it? Because there are people that when you see them, you will be shocked. You will not believe that these are the people shooting the arrows. That is why they are hiding. Because if you see them, only by seeing you, they will be so disappointed to, in, in their act. Because you have not done them any wickedness. The Bible said they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. I love verse 3. The Bible said why they are thinking of shooting you. The Bible now said from the mouth of God. There is something you need to consider. If the foundations, not one, many foundations. If the foundations are destroyed. In this time of attack, if the foundation of your warfare prayer, if the foundation of your violent prayer, if the foundation of your understanding of the wicked is destroyed, please, I don't want you to be among those believers in this age that will tell you, oh, don't know anything about the devil, don't know anything about demon. Please, I want you to understand something. The better you understand the devil, the better you understand the demon, the better it gives you the capacity to deal with the devil. So the Bible is saying here, if you don't have the foundation of the knowledge of the people that want to destroy you, you don't have the foundation of the knowledge, you don't understand their strategy, you don't understand their method, you don't understand their intent. You don't understand their expectation. What will you, even though you are righteous, what will you do? So that is why this lesson today and this prayer today is important. God <coughs> is trying to lay a foundation of knowledge to the righteous. Don't keep yourself careless. We are getting into the period where the devil and his agent want to balance the account. Why you are trying to serve God in righteousness? Please be careful. Build up your foundation of warfare. Build up the foundation of your prayer. Build up the foundation of your understanding of the principle of fighting a good warfare. Look at number four. <coughs> In number four, the Bible now said, see, eh, listen to this. 
Whether you want to know, if you like, repair your foundation. If you like, don't repair your foundation. God will still be God. Look at verse 4. He said, God, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. He sees it. His eyelid touches the son of man. But yet, he cannot move until you call him to move in the place of warfare. Some people say, eh, eh, God sees now. God will protect me now. No, that's not the principle of God. The principle of God is, call upon me in the time of trouble. Are you hearing me, somebody here? You must understand the time of trouble, the time when the wicked has privately sent the arrows to bring you down. You must be a man that is ready to fight a good warfare. Look at verse 5 as we round up. The Bible now said in verse 5 that the Lord is just testing you, the righteous man. Listen to me. That you are righteous does not mean you are not going to pass through tests. You are going to pass through the test of warfare. Your capacity of warfare prayer. Your capacity of in spiritual battle intelligence. You are going to be tested in the place of warfare strategy. You are going to be tested in the place of your faith. In your prophetic capacity. You are going to be tested in the place of being more than a conqueror. What will you do when the advances of hell come calling? Are you one of those that will stand and say the Lord is with me? I will not be afraid what the wicked want to do. I will fight a good fight of faith. The Bible says God tests the righteous. But the wicked and the one who love violence. Child of God. Are you seeing what we are seeing? That wickedness and violence goes together. The wicked are not far from violence. And what is violence? Violence is when a man, when a woman, when an organization, when a structure, when a covenant forcefully invoke the principle of force to either kill, to steal, or to destroy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As we bring this sermon to an end, child of God, please, anybody that is dead is dead though. It is important that you understand that God wants you and I to pass the test as a righteous man. You are not just born to be righteous alone. You are also born to be righteous in the place of prayer. Righteous in the place of warfare. Righteous in the place of wisdom. Righteous in the place of strategy. The Bible says, God will always be in his throne. God will never come down until a man invite him to intervene. Finally, Finally, in verse 6, how do we deal with the evil hours of untimely death of the wicked? Let's see verse 6. In verse 6, God now gave us four capsules against the spirit of untimely death. Hear me as I round up. <coughs> If you want to stop the hours of untimely death, righteousness does not stop it. That's what the scripture is saying. Holiness does not stop it. But in verse 6, the Bible told us the four things that can stop the evil hour of the wicked, the evil hour of untimely death. Number one, the Bible says, if you want to stop the hour of untimely death of the wicked, 
You need to call down the rain of coals of fire. So I pray anywhere that the wicked want to fire the armor of untimely death against anything that concerns you. I command the rain of coals to come upon their head. That's number one. Number two, God now said, if you want to stop the hour of untimely death, you need to invoke in the name of Jesus the rain of liquid fire. I invoke wherever you are watching me, anywhere else are being sent hours from the sun, hours from the moon, hours prepared by the stars, hours from the astral kingdoms, hours from evil forest, hours from evil tree. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, challenge it by brimstone. Then the last but not the least, you must challenge it by horrible tempest. That means hurricane. So the four things that can stop the arrows of untimely death. Number one, rain of snare. Number two, rain of fire. Number three, rain of brimstone. Number four, rain of horrible tempest. I pray for somebody watching me today. May the rain of tempest, the rain of brimstone, and the rain of fire and snare locate the head of every wicked, firing the hour of untimely death against your life to bring you down. In Jesus' name, Amen. Anytime you do what God does, you will get what God also got. The day you surprise God, that is the day that an end will be seen happening to your history to give you a future that is greater than your history. I pray that your anointing will break through the panels of the screen and touch the people in their different homes, in their different institutions where they are watching us live. <laughs>